Today we begin year three of the Raiders franchise. But it seems that not many are excited after our latest offseason and the players that we added. Well, don't you realize we just drafted one of the most athletic tackles in the most recent draft class? He was the most pro-ready prospect in the draft at the position. And not only that, we signed guard Kevin Zeitler, and he has also noticed the potential in Leon Hillhouse, and he's taken him under his wing with 10 plus years of veteran experience, teaching him the tricks of the trade all throughout preseason. Leon Hillhouse is in for a very big year as the new starting right tackle of the Las Vegas Raiders. Oh, you're underwhelmed by Carl Morton, the third round rookie. We picked up a first round athlete in the third round, and we have prior history of developing a raw but athletic edge rusher. And not to mention, we have a mentor who also went to the same school. Khalil Mack is back. And he's going to teach Carl Morton everything he knows. What, you don't like the signing of Michael Pierce? We have a 350 plus pound nose tackle now that helps stop the run. And we also picked up an outstanding blocking tight end in Will Disley. It's like a six man offensive line when he's out there. How about wide receiver Taylor Seymour? We took him on day three, and he's got starting potential. And don't forget about the players that we've already drafted, and we'll see their roles increase this year. We've been developing the future of the Las Vegas Raiders, and we're only getting started. And let me tell you about a player we drafted a year ago, Anthony Clinton. You're gonna be thrilled every time you watch him as a punt returner. The Raiders are back for year three of the franchise and we're ready to compete with the likes of Kansas City and Baltimore and anybody else in the AFC that thinks they have what it takes. This is gonna be a special year, all right? All right, I'm done. I understand it was a pretty underwhelming off season especially to spend essentially three picks on a player with normal development and not get at least hidden development there. That is disappointing. I used all those picks at tackle because the way I had structured the scouting, I had most of my information on tackles because it was a strong position and a position in need. And then a bunch more resources at receiver, which turned out to not be as vital with the emergence of Rashad Bateman. So I had most of my information dedicated to those two spots and my thought process was, well, let's make sure I get the best tackle I can. I don't want to give up like a future first round pick or anything, but ultimately we got a starting caliber player spent more than we should have at that time. But I felt like I wanted to go get the best tackle I could and not be stuck trying to make the most out of drafting players I only had 50% information on in rounds two and three. And then I did take one of those players in round three in Carl Morton, and his uh, ratings are very much raw, and he's going to have to get a lot of development, and it's an uphill climb with his starting points. Here you are seeing the final cuts going through preseason. I did cut a few veterans to make room for some of the younger depth with more upside. Ultimately, no major cuts as far as contributors from past seasons in the series, really. And here's how the preseason went, by the way. It was very strong for quarterback Denzel Stockton and backup Aiden O'Connell. Josh Jacobs had 141 yards, and Shakir Cheney had three and a half yards a carry. We'll see if he's ready to be the number two behind Jacobs. At receiver, Anthony Clinton, Trey Tucker led us in receiving, and Taylor Seymour found the end zone. And on defense, the top playmaker was second-year defensive tackle Ramon Hayes. And I'm hoping this is a big breakout year. We did not end up making a huge splash in free agency or any like really major move that is going to 
increase the excitement in this team for the next year. So what we're banking on is that the young players can take leaps and guys like Ramon Hayes get better and this team gets better as a result. Because you look at the team on paper and it doesn't look quite as good as the one last year. We didn't have the cap space to keep everybody around. And we'll just have to see if players are able to take the leap, if players can develop, and if we have what it takes this year to compete while this window is still open. This is a really big year in the franchise. We have a very veteran focused build. We started the series by signing key guys on defense. We already had some key players like Max Crosby, Josh Jacobs, Devontae Adams. Well, that core now is starting to get to that age where they begin to regress and a lot of contracts are up at the end of the year. Legereus Sneed is now down to an 85 overall. There's a decent gap between him and Jalen Johnson now in the low 90s. Max Crosby, Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs, Michael Mayer. Those players are all going to be free agents at the end of this season. I do think we can have the money to re-sign them. Doesn't change that it's going to still be a team that has much of its core possibly regressing. And what does this all mean for guys like Denzel Stockton now in his third year? I think that I still need to see a leap from Stockton before I say we're going to continue building around him going forward in the series. So it could come down to how postseason play ends up going. I do think we have a very good offensive line, or at least it's solid and going to get better. With the likes of Childress, Ford, and Hillhouse now, we've drafted a starter in every year of the series, and I think we have a pretty complete line. But I think this year, a lot is going to come down to which players can take a leap, if those players can take a big leap. Because now, without Jacoby Myers, we have the more unproven Anthony Clinton who steps in to try and be that third receiver. I want to see if his downfield playmaking ability can give us a boost. He is not a great route runner, so I don't want him playing in the slot. I'd rather see Rashad Bateman play there in three receiver sets to see if he can carry on the success of last season. We might give some other players a chance, like Taylor Seymour. I actually do think he has starting upside. He has good size, he's only 21 years old, and he's not far away from being able to contribute as a slot receiver or even an outside threat. He has the release to line up anywhere, but he's not a great athlete, so he's going to have to rely on route running to get him separation, and hopefully we can get some good development there if he ends up seeing the field. I think on defense, I'm going to really want to see what Ramon Hayes does this year. I think he's going to be in for a very big second year leap. And then I wonder, can we keep Crosby and Wilson healthy? I signed Khalil Mack because pass rush is pretty vital. And I wanted to make sure we had some depth there. And I was hoping by drafting someone in the third round, we'd have more quality depth. But I don't think anyone's going to be convinced about Carl Morton until he goes out and sacks somebody. So we'll see if he ends up getting a chance. But he's extremely raw. Ultimately, my goal this year is to eclipse our past success. I want to go to the AFC title game this season. We need to keep progressing as a team. We have to keep getting further and further along. And today... We start our year three journey. We take on the LA Chargers here in week one. I'm focused on the offense. We have a quarterback we invested a lot into, including what's around him. Drafting three starting offensive linemen, keeping around Devontae Adams, and finding Rashad Bateman, keeping Josh Jacobs here. So let's go and put up an even better offense than we did a year ago. That's the plan. I've also gone ahead to assign our scouts for this year. And we're going to focus again on edge rushers because it's really strong in this draft. We then have a two-star scout here, Calvin Johnson. You might have heard of him. He's going to be the receiver scout. And it's just because these are the two spots that I think are really advantageous in the draft. I also have two scouts focused on safety, one on inside linebacker. I'm really playing to the strengths of the class here. 
The first round should see a lot of pass rushers come off the board. And with Max Crosby getting older, Carl Morton maybe not being an answer. We'll see about that. I want to see who else is out there. Because I'm hoping that at least in this next draft, I can come away with a really high quality first round pick. Ideally with normal dev, but it hasn't been easy to come by. At wide receiver, you still look at Devontae Adams getting older. I'm not sure about Anthony Clinton. So in a class this strong, and I'm thinking more in the day two, like rounds two to four range, there should be a lot of choices to find someone that fits what we want. Safety also has a lot of players up top, and I'm specifically focused on those in the West region. We have one scout that's going to focus on them there. Overall, this next draft that we're going to have is very pass rusher and tackle heavy. There's only one quarterback projected to go in the first, like, four rounds, I think. Joel Maddox is really all you're going to get this year for a starting caliber early on. But why don't we get this season underway? We take on the Chargers, and let's get to know what they are all about here these days. With Darwin James, Rashawn Slater, a 28-year-old Justin Herbert, Asante Samuel, Keenan Allen, Joey Bosa. So the team up top, talent-wise, hasn't changed considerably. They've taken a couple players we've known in this series, like Tevin Barr at running back. And let's go ahead and spend our staff points as well. So I'm going to spend the 40 points here to get the awareness boost for the quarterback. Every point there, I think, helps. We're also going to get the strength boost at defensive tackle in the hopes we can get this run game more on track. And then I want to work our way down to this bull rusher skill, which I can't get quite yet, but I can get us a step closer. Welcome in to year three, everybody. The Raiders franchise pushes on. We won our first playoff game last season, and we need to build upon that success now this season. And it's the offense that can take the field first as we get underway here in year three. Anthony Clinton will see the field much more, and I'll look to do some more with the formation subs as well. But he should see the first of kind of that third receiver role. Rashad Bateman and Devontae Adams will be the two receivers when it's only a two-receiver set, as it is to open the year. Nolan Irwin starts the season at fullback. And we go play action. Here's Stockton. No, why didn't you get rid of it? What we boost the awareness for if you're going to eat that one? Into the slot goes Bateman. On second and 25, it is cut by Devontae Adams for 11 yards. This is just going to be such a big year for Denzel Stockton. We're not completely sold yet. He's got time, fires deep down the field, and it's knocked away from Anthony Clinton. He had Samuel beat. Now our defense is matched up against Justin Herbert and a talented Charger offense. Tevin Barr is the running back, and they open in the air. And the pass is hauled in. It's Keenan Allen out toward midfield, an 18-yard catch. It's a fake on second down, and there is Max Crosby, your reigning defensive player of the year. Getting started here quickly. He's in the zone just like that, and it's third and 12. Herbert feels pressure. He looks to run, and eventually is taken down by Milton Williams. We try this again to the right side, and Jacobs breaks a tackle and is out to the 19. George Garrison and his Jets open the year 0-1, losing to the Patriots 34-28. Off target there, or knocked away, as Curtis Ford is shaken up. Now, I did sign Kevin Zeitler to be a backup guard. 
So he is out there now, and Jacobs around the edge fights for the first down. This guy's amazing. First and 10. Stockton drills it and is intercepted. Picked off by Asante Samuel Jr. Directed toward Anthony Clinton. And he's gotten his hands on both passes thrown his way. The concern with Clinton is he's not a refined route runner. He's a good downfield burner. Is that going to just naturally fit into the offense? Because on this play, he gets a good release, but it's a deep in route. And it allows Asante to be in the right position at the right time. On first down, pass goes out to Gerald Everett. Good for a first down. From the 27, Herbert off the fake. Slings it, and it's cut by Allen near the 10. First goal to go opportunity on the season, and Herbert has a touchdown to Josh Palmer. Looks like they beat Legereus Sneed. Indeed, that is the case. We had a free rusher, but that's a perfect ball from Herbert. And Sneed's not even in frame there when the ball arrives. Not the most promising start for this offense. They'll try it again for the third time. Stockton unloads downfield and hooks up with Michael Mayer. Now the inside give and room to run. Across midfield goes Jacobs. You gotta love how much Nolan Irwin is seeing the field here early on. As Stockton sees something in the defense. On second down, rush arrives. Bosa sacks him again. Welcome to the NFL, Leon Hillhouse. Your first test is Joey Bosa. And we've allowed two sacks. Got to stretch the field. Third down and 15. Stockton airs it out again. Down the right sideline. This one's caught. Touchdown, Anthony Clinton. Stockton's looking his way early and often. And this time they connect for the big touchdown. If this line can give Stockton time, Clinton's going to be a really dangerous receiver with that speed. After a few drives, if there wasn't anything happening with him, I was going to rotate him out. I don't think that's happening quite yet. Seven apiece. Intercepted! Raiders take it back. It's Trayvon Merrig. Wow, this game is uh, entirely different now after two plays. Merrig has done an outstanding job in this series. He's taken a big leap as a player, earned a good contract with us, which is looking like a bargain now. And the Raiders take over at the 27. They'll feed Jacobs, and he's got some space diving inside the 20. Play action. Stockton caught by Adams. Touchdown, Raiders. And that's two scores in the last two passes for Denzel Stockton. Rejoining the action here in the second quarter, the Chargers just got a first down into Raider territory but are still down seven. And off, Tevin Barr stuffed. We're gonna play Milton Williams quite a bit. He's a better pass rusher than Michael Pierce. So when teams go three wide and force us into our nickel or dime, he's gonna be out there. Barr, better carry on the second try. Third down, quick pass, denied for Keenan Allen. Raider ball again, and Jacobs puts a foot down. Hits the gas and gains eight. Clinton wide left, and the pass caught by Rashad Bateman. 
All of our starting pass catchers are now on the board as Jacobs cuts it outside. What a run out to midfield. How'd he break that angle on him like that? Stockton on first down, Bateman in the flats. He might not get as many downfield looks if he's playing in the slot so much. And there might still be some formations where I sub him to be outside and have somebody else in the slot just to get him better route diversity as he makes another catch. But I think he's going to do just fine in whatever role we ask. I mean, last year to me, he was doing the hard stuff. He was winning downfield consistently. Now it is intercepted, intended for Devontae Adams. Another route that is undercut, this time by Rasul Douglas. So that's two touchdowns, two interceptions, the full Denzel Stockton experience. Five yards for Barr. Inside give, first down with ease for Chuba Hubbard. Sending four at Herbert, and nearly intercepted through the hands of Marcus Epps. Play action now, Herbert underneath, and there's nowhere to go. They lose three, and more importantly, Rashawn Slater is shaken up at, after the end of that one. Tyree Wilson facing a backup now at left tackle on third and forever. Herbert feeling pressure away from Crosby. He takes the sack. What a nice guy. He could have thrown it away there or passed the line of scrimmage. Instead, that's a half sack for Max. On we go to the second half. A 14-7 Raider lead. Chargers have the football. And they run the stretch to the outside, and Epps makes a big tackle on Tevin Barr. Now it's a play fake. Herbert rushed by Crosby into the Gatorade it goes. Been a tough day on third down for the Chargers thus far. We bring four. That's caught. First down, Josh Palmer. Herbert across the middle, and Everett is usually good for one of those. Third down now. Crosby's back. Herbert hit again, incomplete. Only 91 yards passing for Justin Herbert. Raider football again. Jacobs downhill for a good gain of six. Guess who's on the field right now, everybody? Will Disley. And it's second down. Stockton, trouble, takes another bad sack inside the five. He doesn't usually take sacks that egregious. Now Jacobs trying to fight out of the backfield, unsuccessful. We have to punt out of our own end zone now. AJ Cole boots it away. And that's why we pay him as much as we do inside the 40. And the Chargers have it at the 47. But excellent field position. Chargers out of the eye. Way more eye formation than I can remember them ever using. Actually, no. Back in the day, remember? They had a 99 overall fullback in Madden. Lorenzo Neal. Nice grab on the outside. Josh Palmer's making plays. From the 37, caught. There's Everett breaking away inside the 20. He got us pretty good in that last meeting. Wasn't he the one that scored the walk-off touchdown? Everett was busy in that game. First and 10, Everett again stopped for a gain of one. Chargers trying to tie things up. Herbert feels pressure, dodges, and fires incomplete for Mike Williams. Devin White defending. I feel like Milton Williams is getting a lot of disruption there. Number 90. Let's see if he can make it happen again on third down. He's doubled. Here's Hayes. Down goes Herbert. 
Ramon Hayes, first of his sophomore season. 14-10 game, and the Raiders take over. It's Stockton with a laser to Michael Mayer. Good start. Inside run, and a flag down, and it's against the fullback, Nolan Irwin. Backed up on first and 17. Mayer for four. Stockton now two touchdowns, two picks, 171 yards through the air. Quick pass behind Adams and incomplete. You got to hit the, the short ones like that to dig out of these third and long holes, or I guess that was second and long. But now you got to go a long way, and Bosa's back. Stockton knocked away. We're on to the fourth quarter, and it really is anybody's game here. And it's a good start to this drive as we do get across the 50-yard line. Charger defense has been pretty tough. But if we can get a touchdown here, we will be in a really good spot. Stockton on the outside. Can't hook up with Mayer. On second down, intercepted again. Third of the day and second going to Rasul Douglas. And again, this is targeted at Anthony Clinton. So what do we got here? He's running a little curl route or an in route rather. And these have been getting jumped all day long. Opening for the Chargers now as Josh Palmer has to be their leading receiver. And it's a give to Barr. Nice tackle made by Sneed. Third down. And there's Everett now for a conversion. Neither team putting up big numbers on offense. Might come down to who makes the least mistakes. And it's Barr for four more. Six in change to go in the game. Keenan Allen in the slot. And the pass goes to Everett. And he holds on for the first. As Milton Williams is now going to have to exit the game. And that's not a good sight with him going into the locker room. That brings Michael Pierce onto the field. I'm not sure how much he can give us as a pass rusher anymore. As Herbert connects with Palmer for seven. Herbert again quick to Gerald Everett. It's just him and Josh Palmer. Like Keenan Allen and Mike Williams are out here not even getting targets anymore. It's a fake and Wilson, he lost it. Come on, no. The Chargers end up with the ball. Tyree Wilson at his best opportunity of the day. And Crosby just tripped over him trying to get the ball. Nice play by Triplett. So they lose a bunch on that play. Four and change left. Good catch by Palmer. And the field goal does him no good. So this is going to be four down territory. They have to get to about the 14. And they give it inside. Bar with room. Gets most of it. And we've got a fourth and about a yard and a half, I want to say. What's it going to be? you got to go with Herbert here. They will throw. And it's broken up. Divine Diablo gives it back to the Raiders. And we have 332 to close out an ugly week one win. Out of the eye. It's a throw. Oh my God, he threw it right at Joey Bosa. Unbelievable. Now they run it and Jacobs gets the first down. Still fighting. Down around the 30. That is huge. Run more clock. We don't want him getting the ball back with much time left or at all. 
On the stretch, Jacobs this time loses three. We have to run one more snap ahead of the warning, unfortunately. It'll be a throw out to Jacobs, and he's brought down in space. Third and 14. A first down here wouldn't end things. We keep it on the ground, and Jacobs gets five. The Chargers are going to have plenty of time to spoil week one. It's a punt to the 22. And the Chargers now have to go 78 yards. Which the way they've moved the ball is going to take like 15 plays. Justin Herbert trying to put together a game winning drive and dumps it across the middle. It's a gain of five. On second down, Herbert out of the pocket now and throws it away. We've been doing a good job of disrupting the pocket and forcing him to, to move. And we should with how much we've invested into this D-line. Third and five. Crosby on the pursuit. Caught first down. Mike Williams. Of course it is. And the drive continues into Raider territory. Herbert, time to throw, caught by Palmer. A 17 yard catch. Timeout, Bolt. 29 yards to go. Caught, Allen down inside the five. We should burn a timeout now. And we let it run. 21 to go. Well, at least they're not giving themselves a ton of time left here. Herbert to throw. Touchdown, Mike Williams. Out of nowhere, the guy does nothing for 95% of the game. He gets the big conversion, and now the go-ahead touchdown. Some things just never change. Oh, they're going to review it. It was close, right? From like that bird's eye angle, I thought maybe the second foot could have been down out of bounds. Okay, that one's down. He stretches. Yeah, that long stride, he's out of bounds. I don't think that's a touchdown. But it stands, so apparently it doesn't matter. You know, I don't know. I have no idea what is a catch in Madden. Where the sideline is, if both feet are down. So there's the left. The right, okay. The right scrapes right there. So this play was reviewed. What we were seeing was this possibly being the first foot. That's easily a catch. And so you're telling me, Denzel Stockton has 14 seconds. Anthony Clinton from the two runs straight ahead across the 25, leaving 10 for the quarterback. We have our timeouts. We can use whatever area of the field we want. And Stockton heads to the air. Finds Adams on the outside. And a timeout is called. And now with four seconds, you only have one option. Hope you get pass interference. Stockton as time expires. That's a dart through the hands of Clinton, who wouldn't have been able to score unless he... Broke that tackle. And that is your game. The Chargers pull it off in week one. Mike Williams does it at least one more time to me. And it's a 17-14 loss. This isn't going to help with those who are already disappointed by the offseason, is it? Three week one interceptions for Denzel Stockton. And this was not a promising performance for the passing game. Things looked really off overall. I thought our defense played pretty great. You know, gave up the touchdown there at the end, unfortunately. But we got pressure. We had a very busy day for Devin White with 17 tackles. And we took the ball away once. This should have been a win. But it wasn't. And we'll see what kind of year this turns into. Was this game a sign of things to come? Or was it just one of those weeks where we weren't quite where we need to be? 
We lost Milton Williams for a few weeks. So we're going to have to see Michael Pierce play a lot more snaps, it appears. We'll play two against NFC teams before taking on the Patriots in week four. I'm looking forward to seeing your feedback on this one, everybody. I feel like we're reaching some really important decisions in this franchise, especially if this game is an accurate representation of what this year is going to be like. I'm going to leave you with that. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and the Raiders franchise will be back again soon. Have a great day.